Hello everybody and welcome on back to the Lighthouse Hut. Before we proceed by taking the elevator on down, we're just gonna be warping to the Hunter's Dream and get a level, maybe two, probably one. There we go. Uh, what do we want? We probably just want skill. Two points in skill, that looks real good. Let's do that. Boom. Farewell, good may you. Yep, get some levels, and now we're just gonna go back to the um, lighthouse hut. But before we do that, we maybe might as well just read up on the attire that we got from Brador. Uh, Brador's testimony. The scalp of a horrible cleric beast, indicating that Hunter Brador, a healing church assassin, had killed a compatriot. Afterward, he swore he wore his ally's own scalp and hid himself away, deep below in a cell. The church provided him with a single soundless bell of death to ensure their secrets would be kept. Uh, let's see, anything more? The bloodied hide of a horrible cleric beast pulled over the back. Without the attached beast hide, this foreign garb wouldn't raise anyone's eyebrows. Raidor donned a compatriot's beastly scalp and hide while still moist with blood. Most of the blood stains on this hide were from that day. And then the... Uh Bloodied armbands. Brador donned a comp Yeah, okay, so it's just the same. We also picked up some of the constable attire. Once upon a time, a trouble, a troop of foreign constables chased a beast all the way to Yarnum, and this is what they wore. The constables became victims of the beast, except for one survivor, who in turn devoured the creature whole, all by himself. This fable is a favorite among Yarnumites, who are partial to any stories of pompous, intolerant foreigners who suffer for their ignorance. It makes the blood taste that much sweeter. And this is the attire that Vulture from the League is using. So yeah, he, he himself swallowed that beast. But enough of the lore, we're gonna go to the lighthouse hut. Okay, back to the hut, and then we're just gonna go into the room with the lift, write it down. And as I did mention previously, there will be some uh, winter lanterns in this area, so just prepare your uh, sedatives on hand. Did I pass them? I think I did. There we are. And then, of course, it doesn't hurt to increase our frenzy resistance, so this harrowed attire is actually insanely low on the frenzy rest, as you can see. Two, three, two, old hunter is pretty good. Seventeen, gray wolf, nineteen. Anything better than 19? Yeah. Eileen's attire it is. Crow feather, crow feather. Really do love this look anyways. It doesn't hurt me. Okay. So there's gonna be some of those, uh, yeah, those guys on patrol. Just let him pass. And then very quickly, we're gonna go into combat with a Winter Lantern. Just be ready here. Avoid the grab, of course. Pop the sedative. Go for the second one. No, we got grabbed. Holy shit, might be dead here. This is bad. Just smash those buttons. We're gonna get Frenzy Pop. We're alive. Ah, we're dead. That is why this is so scary. We do get a nice close look on these ugly bastards, though. Whew. Of anything that we get killed by, it's the freaking Winter Lanterns. The shark, the huge sharks, and the Winter Lanterns are the most ferocious enemies in this game. Holy crap. Did go pretty well, until it didn't, I suppose. So yeah, since we did ride the lip down, just make sure to pop it on up again. Maybe it gets a bit easier with a blue elixir. Let's try that. It is quite important that we do go this way, though, because it leads us to the DLC's only blood rock. So back down, same thing goes. Just let him pass. Use the elixir. Have the sedatives ready. Let's start with a poke this time around. That went well. Dispose of that one. Use the sedative! Second one. Poke, poke, poke. 
We're probably gonna get hit by Frenzy here, but we're good. That's fine. Managed to take them down. That's the most important thing. And taking this all the way back, you're probably gonna recognize this room. This is where we got the Rakuyu with the two huge sharks. Get a Blood Gem and a Kin Cobalt 11. Very neat. Can pop the Blue Alexa again if you want to. Um, to perhaps be extra sneaky. Let's just try it. Let's use the Shell as well to see if we get any increase in damage with it. Through. Yeah, now this guy doesn't really see us. He has our Echoes as well, so that's very nice. Dispose of him. You see that Shaman over there. That is what we want to rush down. Bunch of these guys falling down. Shaman trying to run. Oh, we got grab. The grab hurts a good bit, so just watch out. There's gonna be another Shaman in the corner over here, so just be quick about it. Now dispose of these ugly mugs. Some bullets from the shamans. Oh, can kill all of these, I suppose. We do want to come back that way. Dispose of them. I think that's all of them. Yeah. Another one here. Second one. And get a blood gem, but of course the blood rock. That is what we came for. So now we're just gonna go back and it's time for the Orphan of Koss. Very similar to Maria in a way. We do want to be clutch with our parries if possible versus the Orphan. He has a second phase that can be quite deadly. My memory is not serving me very well right now. I don't quite remember what's the special thing about the second phase. I think he's just going to be like flying around a whole lot and uh, have increased damage. Maybe the memory returns to me when we start the fight. Anyways, just pop this one on up so we have some saved time if we do die. Bunch of docile baddies here. They won't give you any echoes, but can dispose of them if you want to. If you get very mad from the from this boss fight, then <laughs> can be maybe be good enemies to take that anger out on. But here is the secret. The secret that they tried so hard to hide. Should have probably swapped my attire up a little bit, but um, that happens. <laughs> the old man voice mixed with the uh, whole baby cries just gives this boss fight such an interesting vibe. Just look at this. Take it in. Buff up and prepare for combat. Yeah, he does pack a freaking punch. Oh yeah, that's like a trick form of his weapon, if you will. Wow. Super armor, fella. Did not work. Yeah, watch out for that AoE. Ooh. 
Oh my lord. Need to save my HP here. Let's see if we can get a freaking visceral on him. It's serving to be quite difficult right now. Maybe with the auger? We did manage to get one, but no damage. Oh! Yeah, he can throw that stuff, so watch out. When he does that, it is quite easy to get behind him for a charged heavy. Might try that out the next time it happens. There we go. Charge. This one is a bit slow on the charge, so perhaps not gonna work for me. Maybe the auger? Yeah, the auger works really well for the, um, for the visceral when he does that. Yeah, that's the second phase. Wings on the bastard. Bunch of blood sprays. All that nasty stuff. Hoo hoo hoo. Ferocious bugger. He has a lot of HP, crap. Oh my! To use my last vials here. Maybe that's a stagger opportunity as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got caught in the spray. When he does that rampage, just try to dodge it. Not much, not much to say there. This is not going well at all. Maybe a um, visceral? No. And uh, we're dead. Yeah, this fight is just difficult, man. He is very ferocious. Uh, you can get viscerals on him with a well-timed bullet. It is not something I'm making up. I'm just not really getting it. Oh, he's so ferocious in that second phase. My oh my. Now, the damage we were doing was quite lackluster, but... Not much to do about it, you know? It's just... Gotta try again. Gotta get better. Let's swap our attire up for the physical defense, perhaps. I do like that harrowed attire, so let's do that. Uh, doom, boom, 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 boom. Yes, let's do that, and then just a quick loop back to him. Alrighty, so swapping over to this attire, and we can probably now talk about a bit of a better strategy after fighting him once. I am starting to recall why this guy is pretty difficult. Main thing now that I want to switch up is that I want to like really remain in close range. We don't want to be dodging away, we want to be dodging in. Uh, we want to be looking for our viscerals, of course. Uh, speaking of that, could probably be a good idea to go and change some runes, perhaps some claw mark runes for more visceral damage, all that kind of stuff. Um, the arcane damage did not work very well. I, maybe this is the guy who was weak to fire, I don't quite remember. We can equip that, and uh, yeah... This time around, we're just going to try to be way more aggressive. We're going to be dodging in, going to be looking for openings that way instead of going uh, going around. Or, well, dodging the wrong way, rather. So, when he does that, that's a really good opening for our auger. Good damage there. Just going to keep staying in on him. That's a fast one. Not much to do. Maybe it was an auger opening there as well. Oh! Came out quicker than I expected it to. Of course, look out for the explosion.
make use of the rally as much as possible. Unfortunate that that hits with a drag back. Good damage, but a bit greedy. Dodge away, get a heal. Does that, another visceral. Great, we're just gonna keep staying aggressive on him here. Don't let him go into his second phase. Or at least when he does, we want him to be as low as possible. There it is. Try to visceral. Didn't get it. Get some heals in here and same thing, even though it is quite scary. don't want to be running away, we just want to stay at him. I mean, not much to do when he does that, just let him... Preferably we dodge that though. Good. Didn't quite see where he went, unfortunate. Oh ho ho! Oh, orphan. You are so freaking spooky and fast. That's the lightning shenanigans. Staying over here, we're probably going to be the safest. We're a bit trapped, not much to do. Oh no. That goes around to, our, to his right. They didn't even use the fire paper. Holy crap. Oh no, and we dodge back, and that's what happens. That is exactly why we want to be... <laughs> yeah, we want to be going in with our rolls or our dashes rather than away, because then he just catches us with that. But that was looking pretty good. We definitely have a good strategy here. We want to keep at that, and as I did say, it can be a good idea to go back to the Hunter Stream, change up some runes, maybe get some visceral damage if you are getting them a lot. He is... Like, it is possible to gun parry him. The timing is just very tight. But I think we're going to be sticking to this strategy. It's just going for the auger parry or visceral. So whenever we get the opening, when he, like, goes too far and behind us. And besides that, we're just going to be dodging in and hitting him with R1. It's going for the trick form swap is cool and all for a lot of damage. But uh, unfortunately, we will always just get hit if that happens. Oh, the... Oh, whatever. Not a very high amount anyway. Oh, that was fire paper now, not the auger. Uh, what am I doing? Losing my fire paper, that's for sure. Didn't quite get it there. You see, as soon as we give him an inch when we dodge away, we're very prone to get hit like that. Yeah, having a lot of skill points and uh, getting viscerals with, for example, the claw mark is probably really good here. That attack comes out surprisingly quickly. Three attacks? Okay. Usually he gets staggered after three R1s. That's good to look out for. Just let him do his range attack when we're far away. Doesn't matter. That's the third. Stagger, yeah, good. No, don't do that. Let's do that. Get some fire paper going. This is a good opening. Maybe we get it. We do. Nice. Oh, raging about, are we? Let's just go for charge heavy while we're behind him. Got a bit too far away there. No. 
Am I not healing? What's happening? So much stuff. Going about it. When he's flying about like that. Bunch of our ones there. Good, 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 good. Yeah, going for the gun parry is just a bit scary, honestly. It's <laughs> so fast. But if you would do it, it's probably that charge attack. Here the lightning storm comes, getting a lot of damage in though. We would just want to be dodging into the wall. Right about here. He won't be able to get up. Oh ho ho! Thought I could get one visceral there. Went for the gun parry and that's what gets us. Oh my god, I'm gonna roll into the freaking Oh the blood explosions. Shit. Oh man. Oh orphan. That was looking so good. But you really can see why you can't give him an inch. If you do, he is just so prone to get so much damage on you real quick. It is a bit unfortunate as well that our build did go like a lot of points into what ended up being useless arcane. So if you did, for example, be way better about your build, way better than I was at least, then you have like around 40, 45 skill. But same thing goes here again, we're just going to be applying the same strategy. We want to be dodging in instead of away to not give him as many openings as well as uh, trying to get as many visceral as we can with the auger when the opportunity presents itself. Like there. No. My god, that hurt, man. Now maybe? There we go. Some of his attacks just comes out real quickly. That's why you don't roll away. Usually that would hit you. Three attacks, that means a stagger. Four attacks, maybe. Maybe not three. Oh, managed to get that. It is a bit greedy to try for that. You need to be, like, real clutch on the timing. But the reward is neat. That attack just hits so freaking hard. Another visceral, perhaps? Yup, yep, 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 yup. Nice. Looking good. Just want to be remaining aggressive here. Yeah, don't go for the charge heavy. That's just stupid. Maybe here? No, don't go for the charge heavy. That's just stupid. Maybe an auger, though. That's the lightning storm. Get damage in if you can. While dodging away towards the cliffs. Oh, well. That's what we get when we dodge away. Ho 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 ho, orphan. Maybe a visceral there? No. Really? Now, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Nice visceral. One more of those, and that should be curtains. Aggressive, aggressive. Maybe there? Wrong way. Where is he? Oh man. Oh man, he is so ferocious now. And some are ones to end it. And that is the Orphan of Cause. Yet again, I can't stress this enough. Just be aggressive. Don't dodge away too much. You see how much I got punished by it. Just remain aggressive. A freaking awesome fight, however, to end this DLC. 
And we get the Cost Parasite, a very interesting weapon. If we equip it here, it is in our in our main hand here, it's just you can't really see it. So if you do have the Parasite, a lot of your like R1s just looks like this, right? Like you're unarmed. That is because you can't use this weapon unless you have the Milkweed Rune equipped. Uh, did not talk about the Rakuyu at all, nor the Simon's Bowblade. Let's just do that a bit later. But for now, no prompt, right? You might be wondering, I mean, I beat him. What now? Well, walk over to this. Slap this darkness. And the Nightmare Slain prompt appears. Light the lamp. Can maybe use this minute... Oh, okay, yeah, cinematic. Can watch that out. Ah, sweet child of Kos, returned to the ocean. A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. And there it is. The curse. And here is what would be cause. So what actually happened here? That is a good question. But this is where it all began. Since uh, we see a bit of a, its face there, it actually has like a nose. A bit of a, like a human look to its face, while the rest of it kind of looks like a big slug. In a way, obviously, two arms going out. And then this huge fin. But where it all began? Yeah, who knows? Either Paws got dropped down from the cosmos as... We are aware. Cos, or some say Cosm, perhaps for cosmos. Maybe she dropped from up there to the sea. Or maybe she was part of the sea. But she died, somehow, and got dragged up on the beach. And this is where humanity started to like affiliate with the with the Great One's blood. And this is where like Yarnum goes into this um, like medicinal way of using the blood, and that is where it starts. And um, how it all fits in in the DLC, don't quote me on any of this, as I do like to say, I, I'm not 100% certain. But the reason why, for example, we can find Maria at the Astral Clock Tower, but still find her Rakuyu in the well is because uh, that is the curse that we're in before. And when we go through the clock tower into the fishing hamlet, we are no longer part of that blood drunk nightmare, but we are instead here trying to lift the curse and killing the orphan of cause and disposing of that shadow that we saw there. The story of this game is just fantastic. I feel like it is relatively easy to follow in comparison to many Souls games. <laughs> It can be a bit hard sometimes to follow in what actually happened, as um, as when it comes to the lore. But anyways, defeating the orphan, it is the end to the Hunter's DLC, and we will be warping to the Hunter's Dream. We're warping over to the Hunter's Dream, we're gonna be wrapping this one up, and we will save the ending for the next one. I'll see you guys then.